What's going on, everybody? I'm Andrew Jupin alongside the whole gang, Eric Siska, Christopher Cavan, and Steven Sadak. Hi. Uh, this oh, is... Oh, this Bill is Coleman. Um, hmm? Bill Coleman. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's welcome in German. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Classing it up around here a little bit. I like that. Uh, so we are here. This is the September... Ish. Mailbag? Ish? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's September. Gonna be, it's going to be September. Recorded in August, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's uh, a bag-ish. An og <laughs> An Ogtember, an og an og if you will. An Ogtember mailbag. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're just going to read some letters that we get in the WHM mailbag. And um, Eric Siska, oh. let's start it off with you. I'm going to cut him right the fuck off. Whoa, oh, my God. You know what? For one reason, one reason only. We're going on tour in mm. uh, <laughs> in November. So if you're listening to this in September and you're unaware of it and you're on the West Coast, you right. want to come check us out at whmpodcast.com. Check out that tour tab. Uh, November the 6th, we're in San Francisco. November mm -hmm. the 7th, we are in Portland. And November, in November the 10th, yep. we're in L.A. So if you're in any of those places, you want to see us talk about some fun movies, check that out. And, and when you go to whmpodcast.com, by the way... Uh -huh. It's all new. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. an all yeah, it's new. Exciting. It's very exciting. It. It's because it's the tenth season. Yeah, and I love it when you cut me up. No problem. <laughs> it's season ten. Oh, Gordon me. Ramsay. Oh no, that's it's season ten. That's a season ten move. <laughs> right, because Master Chef this past year yes. was there also season ten. Yes, we're kind of contemporaries. Wow, with neck and neck with Master <laughs> Chef. Huh? My favorite part about the season ten on the Master Chef. Yeah. I'm gonna keep talking yeah. about it. Oh, for mm -hmm. sure. That's what that's what YouTube is. People like cooking. He was. His thing this year is just like, oh, he this, he gets it. oh da damn, this omelet is running. This is like a season one omelet. <laughs> this is not a season ten omelet. Oh, it's no. Yes, that oh. shitty omelet would have won <laughs> season uh, one when uh -huh. we didn't give a fuck. That's so <laughs> stupid. We were eating dog food in season one. Now it's season ten. But, well, Human I, food. Slippery slope on Gordon Ramsay here because that delegitimizes like all these other master chefs. I uh, thought it was a big label. I thought it was an important label. <laughs> exactly. No. Nope. Nope. Well, season one master chef. Like, oh, fuck you too, dude. Yeah. I think that goes for a lot of those shows, though, because like, think about, does anyone care about the first Top Chef? No. Right? Yeah. I don't remember. I can't remember. I couldn't even tell you. Yeah. Wasn't that just at a bar in Miami? <laughs> was Maybe. that even on TV? I think it was on TV. You, oh, Paul, know. you're the Top <laughs> Chef. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you got an olive and a lime. No, that was Do a, what you will. That was just a porno movie you saw. Oh, okay. It was, a, it was about a Top You'd move to your right a little bit, so your this? your beautiful visage isn't obscured by the this? stupid microphone arm. Gotcha. Yeah, that's actually better. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Uh, so, Eric Siska, start us off with this first email. Welcome back to WHM Almost Got Me Killed. Ooh. Okay, here we go. Hey, gang. <laughs> I work the night shift at a hotel where there Eep. are no cameras. Um... No other employees but myself, meaning I could do pretty much whatever I want. <laughs> oh, my God. Is this Norman Bates? Great interpretation of Bruto from Mindhunter. <laughs> As assuming drunk assholes leave me alone. Hey, don't leave me alone, you drunk assholes. <laughs> I got to do what I want, and I can't do what I want if you're here, asshole. <laughs> All right, I'll... Go cool. back to a human voice. Um, <laughs> it's pretty sweet to get paid to watch movies or read books most of the night. I also listen to podcasts while preparing breakfast, cleaning the lobby, and fi uh, filing various hotel paperwork. Mm. Wait, this dude's also the guy preparing the breakfast, by the <laughs> way? That's a little weird. All right. I would just say tell this dude to stay out of room 237. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I see what you did there. You see what I'm doing yeah. there? Yep. That's where the... Uh, <laughs> So the granny shaggers go. <laughs> 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 Which makes Monday nights my most an anticipated shift of the week since I know there will be a new episode of WHM to listen to later. So with that said, earlier this morning around 4.30, oh, I was shit. listening to your live episode on Knowing when the urge to urinate struck. So I abandoned the hotel kitchen. Oh, come on, Gibbons. <laughs> You're not supposed to leave the desk like that. <laughs> It's pancakes, not urinal cakes, okay? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> man. Yeah, it's probably no, they don't taste good. They look like they taste good. Urinal cakes? In what? your basket, you've got <laughs> urinal cakes. <laughs> Eric's right though. I've always right? like you look at those. Oh yeah, certain. I kind of just want to like take a bite into it. You I know it's poison. 
I gotta say, you, I noticed you changed your uh, little bath, your bath, your toilet water. You got the tropical flush going on in there. Got the tropical flush. We Very go nice. on and off with the tropical flush mm-hmm. in this house, and it's been out of circulation for way too long. Mm-hmm. And Chelsea bought a new one, and I was like, <laughs> "Fuck yeah, tropical flush!" Class of this place I, up a little right, bit. That is a season ten toilet. <laughs> Yeah. None of this season one shit. Come I'm, on! I'm ready. I'm waiting for the wild berry flush. <laughs> wild oh, berry. you know what? Purple in the toilet would look yeah, nice. Yeah. Purple yeah. in the toilet would look pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. Green isn't too bad either. That's true. You can go make your own. Oh, the Ecto cooler. The yeah. sour flush. Yeah. Oh, sour. atomic sour flush. St. Patty's Day edition. Um, <laughs> all right, where was I? Because this guy was peeing and he ran away. <laughs> Okay, so uh, band in the hotel kitchen and <laughs> hurried to the lobby bathroom. All this time, I'm still listening to the podcast with one earbud in. I'm standing at the urinal when I notice the bathroom stall is shut and a man is sitting on the other side taking an extremely loud and violent shit. Oh, wow. That shit was beating him up. It got violent. I say violent because the man kept groaning in pain and saying, <laughs> saying loudly, wait. Groaning a pain, and I say loudly, why do you think? Is this just editorial? And I say loud because why do you think? Like, why do you think, man? It's loud in there. All right, because he's the the bang, bang, bang. Oh, I see. Poop, poop, poop. Poop, 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 poop. Oh, oh, because the the use of loud, like a sentence and a half ago. This shit doesn't have a megaphone. (laughs) (laughs) It's just (laughs) a trenchant toilet. (laughs) We're about to drop into your area. Coming down. Incredibly violent, incredibly close, incredibly loud. Isn't that that book that nobody likes? Yeah, yeah. the Jonathan Safran yeah, Bauer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, people like that book. They didn't like that the movie. movie. That's yeah, the movie is yeah, horrible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I try my best to ignore this man as he deals with his own misery and <laughs> continues to urinate. I focus on the podcast in my earbud, only to hear Eric refer to internet people as webheads, which immediately forces me to let out an unexpected laugh in the middle of an un- otherwise unfunny bathroom. You know, have you guys ever laughed while you pissed? That kind of... I feel... I once sneezed, and it, like... It, I, I had to sit down for a month. Oh, yeah, no, it's just, oh, that'll, that'll freak you right out. <laughs> right? And then, you know, you gotta clean everything up. And then you're just covered in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's completely covered. <laughs> I don't think I've ever gates. chuckled or l- laughed, but uh, I have suppressed laughter a lot. When I am next to somebody who's really going for it, especially at, like, oh. work or something, you're in the work bathroom, and someone's like, eh, yeah, eh, and it's, you're just like, nope. It's the groans. It's, it's always the, the, it's groans the groans because they are so animated, Doing like, their little ha, <laughs> ha, <laughs> and stuff like that. Like, you're just like, please don't do and this You know those me. guys are dropping little pellet shits, probably. <laughs> yeah. you, you never had, like, a chuckle piss, though? <laughs> like, if I go to the bathroom, Maybe like, a li- like a light. Like, you know. let's say, like, theoretically, uh-huh. I'm smoking weed. Gotcha. <laughs> Sometimes, if I'm, like, laughing about something, I'll take it into the bathroom with me, and the fun doesn't stop. <laughs> and I'm just laughing about whatever dumb thing but I was laughing it's about. it's dangerous because then oh, the yeah. stream is like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I have it's laughed. so crazy. You're shaking all the cameras. <laughs> That's just fucking pissing and laughing. I have laughed at the side of my own penis, which, so oh, that, yeah. that makes sense. Uh-huh. That By the way, that the is sense. our opening act in San Francisco, <laughs> <laughs> Portland, and Los Angeles. We are uh, showing dicks anyway. Uh, All right, here we go. Yes, yeah, back to showing regular dicks. <clears throat> here we go. All right, uh, he's laughing in the bathroom. The man in the stall obviously assumes I'm laughing at his situation <laughs> well, yeah. and shouts, Hey, fuck you, buddy. I'll <laughs> break your fucking jaw. <laughs> I had five bags of flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> Where do you think this is? Oh, Jesus. I'm just picturing a guy like trying to wrestle another guy with like a half a log oh, coming God. after you. Anyway, <laughs> something out of like Borat. Sh- shuffling out of the stall. <laughs> if you're going to beat somebody up while you're taking a shit, at least pinch it off before yeah, you, you strike the first blow. Yeah, you pinch it real quick. <sighs> pinch it away. But, but you don't know what's going to come. Yeah, true. Anyway, I mean, it's bathrooms are complicated. I say avoid and any interaction. In the heat of battle, you could be taking a shit anywhere. I mean, <laughs> really. Battle. Yeah, the, <laughs> it, it, the Spartans in 300, in real life, were just all like huddling and shitting. It is honorable to go after someone while <laughs> shitting. That is called cloth crock on Klingon. <laughs> yeah, cloth <laughs> crap? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, okay, Come so fight me, Worf, if you can. <laughs> Why do you shit? I will piss. <laughs> Star Trek Klingons present bathroom fight. 
I will piss and laugh at you, Wolf. Oh, you do not fight. <laughs> oh, you don't fight while sitting anymore. The Federation has changed you. <laughs> what do you think a Klingon bathroom looks like? Oh, it's a trough. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, Two Klingons, one cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, I don't Well, I, don't, I wouldn't. I don't know. Do you think? I guess if you know humans have definitely eaten their own shit. Yeah. So there's got to be a shit hungry Ooh. Klingon maniac out there. Question: <laughs> You go in, and I'm going to do this because we're, we're we're videotaping here. Sure. You go into the bathroom, right? All right. Yeah. Please demonstrate. You're a Klingon. Right. I guess you just take that sash off, and you got a little hook for your your. There's your a hook. Yeah. Much right. like much like our coat racks, <laughs> or like just the coat hook in a stall. Just take that off, and yeah. then there you go. Mayor McCheese does the same thing. <laughs> Oh, I forgot he's got a sash. Yeah, it's oh, you think he's sharp. ever used it? Like he's just in a situation. He's like, oh man, <laughs> TP is out. He doesn't want to run to the. Bathroom. Oh, he kitchen. wiped with his own yeah. sash. Oh, he yeah, that's possible. It and clogged the toilet, and that's why those <laughs> McDonald's toilets are always locked. Meanwhile, Grimace is just a walk and plop guy. Grimace is like the Cottonell Bears. Yeah, like he's just shitting and walking. I'm yeah, but saying. he's got fur, so he's like getting it oh, all in there. Oh, does he have fur? Yeah, he's furry. So those bears, those commercials are always about like, I've got shit all over me. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, That's pretty much they're Cottonelle's heinous. ad campaign. Yeah. Is it Cottonelle? I think it's Cottonelle. Yeah. Might be wrong. They should Quilted all... Northern? I think it's Cottonelle. Okay. And they should all end with them just going into a lake. <laughs> just a <laughs> yeah, lake yes, and totally. a, like shaking your butt in the lake. Get and it the all is clean. Yeah. And it could be a thing where it's like Cottonelle. For when you don't have a lake at your disposal. Oh. Cotton, no, we can't do everything. <laughs> Honey, we bought the lake house to jump in there after we shit. Cotton, I'll wash your ass. <laughs> that's, the, that's the slogan. <laughs> Instead of apology. Wait, wait. Hold on a second. The anger in his voice sent fear through my entire body. As it should. Instead of apologizing, I quickly zipped up, flushed, washed my hands, and fled the bathroom. I appreciate <laughs> that he washed his hands. Oh, of course. Yeah, I would skip it. I, He's at work. Too, too many people must wash hands. Too many people skip it. I gotta say, I in I a situation in a violent situation, mm-hmm. I got fucking Jack Torrance coming after me. When <laughs> I worked in an office, so many of the dudes there would just flat out oh, never yeah. wash their hands, oh. and then suddenly, like they bring in like mac and cheese from the potluck, and I'm like, I'm not fucking touching that. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're just like, What's wrong? Not hungry. You should have called him out. You should have been like, no, because I fucking saw you in the bathroom after lunch and you didn't fucking wash your hands, Derek. And that means you never do it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is very true. Um, yeah, but I didn't call them out because I'm a coward. Mm-hmm. Okay, Fair sure. enough. Um, <laughs> I made it uh, back behind the desk uh, just as the guest exited the bathroom looking around the lobby for the bathroom <laughs> giggler. <laughs> Is that a Batman villain? <laughs> yeah, it's one of the low tier ones. Early Joker yeah. days, he yeah. didn't quite have it. Uh, how about the bathroom giggler? Robin, he's laughing at my shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe no one's taking me seriously. I'm the bathroom giggler. <laughs> <laughs> Love that shit. <laughs> Tell the mayor no one can use a public restroom in Gotham. <laughs> Flush. <laughs> he he gave up. I got a cup of coffee and then approached the front desk and checked out. The whole time he kept giving me a look that he knew it was me, and I kept giving him a look that I was hoping he wouldn't murder me. <laughs> well, I'm the only other one in here. It's got to be one of us. <laughs> I'm waiting for you in the parking lot, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Just piece off in a Camaro. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. FYI, he did not murder me. All right. Have you ever laughed at a movie? <laughs> this is an interesting transition. <laughs> have you ever laughed at a movie or anything else totally innocent only to have it be misinterpreted as something very inappropriate? If so, what were the consequences? Thanks for the countless, not countless, he says constant entertainment. That's true, but it is also countless. Look at that Patreon. <laughs> if you ever come back to uh, Central Texas, I, uh, I'll let you stay at the hotel under my associate discount. I like that. Max, thank you, Not Max. if people are going to be laughing at me in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, what, so what, did I ever laugh and it, the, the laughter was in misinterpreted? In, in, I don't know about misinterpreted, but I just, uh, the other night I was out walking the dog. Hi. Mm-hmm. And this woman, <clears throat> kind of like one of the local yeah. sidewalk people. <laughs> Local side. <laughs> it's a good description. It's a small neighborhood. You yeah, know yeah. all of them. Yeah, sure, you know. sure, sure. She's walking down the street and she's got a huge like Burger King soda cup, and the dog is kind of like sniffing a fence right as she's walking. And I think she didn't see the dog, you know. 
And the dog didn't do anything. She just kind of like looked up, but the mere sight of a dog, I guess, like frightened her. And she just went, ah! And like, she stopped walking, but the soda cup did not. And it went flying oh. and just hit the sidewalk and like seltzer went everywhere. And she just goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's terrible, but sure. I just fucking started laughing yeah. and I had to get out of there. I was the yeah. fucking sidewalk giggler, dude. <laughs> I had to go. Robin, it's the sidewalk giggler. <laughs> uh, um, so I was just laughing at homeless people. It's just me. Uh, I was walking. Th- it's not, again, it's a misinterpretation, but I definitely should not have been laughing at this. <laughs> uh, I was walking down the stairs, coming back from a movie at the uh, 68th Street uh, Theater, and I was behind this guy for mm-hmm. like two or three blocks. And at one point, like very suddenly, he goes to the side of the sidewalk where there's grate and vomits like <laughs> oh, right into the grate. Oh, 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 and I just start, I burst out laughing. <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm like, oh, oh, God. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's Poor great. fella. <laughs> uh, I don't really have a good one, but I remember uh, my former boss, like one day at the office, he was just like, oh, you know, last night I, I went to the Ed Sheeran concert. And I just started laughing. <laughs> it was not a good scene. Thankfully, his yeah. children were involved, was and it wasn't say. just him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I, th- I think I'm almost positive I told this in the air before, but I'll just say it now real quick. Uh, as I f- got fired from my first job from laughing. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. This I, is a Steve Sadak classic. Uh, oh, yes, 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 yes. I worked at a bagel store. My first job uh, in high school, whilst, whilst I was in high school, I uh, worked at a bagel store making bagels in the morning. I wasn't very good at it. I was late a little bit. I was a never bit wa- sh- never wash your hands. No, never. Wash no, your hands. never. As a matter of fact, he wiped with his hands. He was... <laughs> wiped with bagel dough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was a little too slow during the rush. Like literally, this thing was not working out well. But yeah. you know, um, it's going along. It's me and a couple other people. And the boss uh, was trying to get something from on top of a shelf. I was the three, bagel boss. Three, oh, <laughs> I, I, fuck. <laughs> you worked with the bagel boss? I dude? did not work with the bagel boss. I'm taller than the bagel boss. I'm pretty sure. Uh, the fuck you, Shane? <laughs> dude, well, you know what? Th- we're going to make a guitar out of cream cheese on this bagel. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's a fucking scumbag. Bagel yeah. boss? Yeah, that yeah, dude stinks. Like, I just hate that he's like somewhat famous-ish now. Oh, that guy. I was thinking of Cake Boss, and it's just oh, the bagel boss. No, no, no. Bagel <laughs> boss, dude. Yeah. Cake is boxing. Bagel Boss, did I see right? Bagel Boss is involved in some sort of like F grade celebrity boxing? Yes, he is. Really? That's great. I think he might be running for president. It's all. Sure. Happening. Wow. No, hey, uh, pr- prayers for the end of Million Dollar Baby for that guy, dude. <laughs> but really quickly, uh, he's trying to reach for something on the top shelf. The floor is totally slick because it's like a bakery, so there's a lot of like actual legit breadcrumbs all over the place. Sure. And he slips and he falls. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I, give a, I give a good little laugh there. Not Are you laughing perfect. like Danny DeVito? <laughs> what was that? Just, sort of. <laughs> and I give a good little laugh, and he gets up. He's like, when, I, when you don't have a job next week, we'll see if you laugh. And I was like, oh, fuck that guy. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, it, it, was, it, was, you know, it was way back when I was off the books. He's paying me back, paying me in cash. He's like, all right, uh, here's like 90 bucks, and uh, you don't come back anymore. And I was like, so that, okay, so that's what we're doing. Oh, so you actually meant. Yes. Oh, I see. I am fired. Okay, okay. (laughs) But it worked out, didn't it? Yeah. You're fine. I'm I'm doing okay. You landed on your feet Mm -hmm. all these years later. Uh, uh, Chris Cabin. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Vincent, RIP. Ooh. The best. It doesn't um, say RIP. No, it does not, but I'm saying RIP because he was great. Well, then you should um, say RIPD. RIPD. I'm sorry, Eric. There Are you going to get over it? Clearly uh, he's not. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's going <laughs> to stew for a while here. Uh, in the early to mid-90s, I was working as a bartender in a restaurant that was located in a historically designated train station in New Jersey. The restaurant. I'm sorry. It's just NJ, uh, not yeah. New Jersey. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Eric. I was about I'm to sorry. catch you're gonna, that. You're going to blow your top. <laughs> uh, the restaurant was formerly a nightclub, and we were early in the days of changing the image of the place to that of a dinner club. I'm, I'm still not sure what a dinner club I don't is. Nightclub I mean, versus dinner club. I don't. I think that's an older fashioned term. I don't. Well, think and then what's a supper here. club? That's similarly. Right. Well, ah. I think it's like cocktails and racism. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I think the supper club is something that wherein somebody comes and cooks for you in your house, and you get like oh, a group what? of people what? together. What? Oh, that's really? insane. And then you group, you join hands, and you do like a seance. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. It's Rosemary's baby shit. Well, well this <laughs> the, the, actually, the next sentence explains exactly oh, what, okay. a, what, oh, a, sorry. what a dinner club is. Just read what this description is, and you'll the, get it. The owner had several bands through, mostly playing standards: Frank Sinatra, Bobby Darin, Dean it. Martin. So that it's uh, a 
So it is cocktails and racism. It's a, yeah, it's cocktails and racism. It's a place I'd never want to go nope, in my nope, life. Nope, nope. Yep. Uh, one night, as we were setting up for dinner, and a few of the regulars off the train were at the bar, the band for the night started bringing their equipment in. John at the bar is a friend of mine. What Sorry. are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and he's only playing at a dinner club. I was uh, in the middle of writing a real estate novel, because I was a real estate novelist, as yes, many people as, are. As everybody knows. Uh, the other bartender and I didn't pay attention to them. After a few minutes, I noticed that one of the bar flies pointing and excitedly talking to another guy at the bar. I look to see what he is pointing at, but can't see anything notable. Uh -oh. Just the guy setting up their equipment. Mm -hmm. very, soon after the very soon after, the dude who was point pointing goes up to where the band is setting up, talks to one of the band members for a few minutes, hands him a napkin, and gets an autograph. Oh, shit. I was very confused mm. because the bands that we had come in, while good, were not real autograph caliber bands. <laughs> uh, ooh, that's Marcy's Playgrounds coming in. <laughs> um, the band finished their setup, played about a minute of a song, made some adjustments, and came down to the bar to get their drinks. Now, my interest is piqued. Who is this autograph seeker worthy person? Of course, he stops to talk to someone else. I'm a bit frustrated at this point. He's just far enough away that I can't really see his face. And just How big is this restaurant? <laughs> it's got, I mean, you got to have a band, all these cocktail tables. Uh, it's probably I guess pretty that's big. True. Yeah. Is this just the place from Goodfellas? It might actually oh, yeah. just yeah. Really, yeah. All right. And then he kissed me. Uh, <laughs> and just, doesn't say that, actually. Oh, I'm sorry, Eric. Um, really sees his face and just looks like a white-haired guy in a sharp suit. So I asked the guy who got the article. Girls go crazy for a whitehead guy in a sharp suit. <laughs> bow, now, now, now. Please I get out of the studio. <laughs> I, too, was reminded of ZZ Top. Don't know why. Stayed quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, so I asked the guy who got the autograph who it is. The guy tells me, it's fucking Billy Bats, man. Yikes. Billy Batman? <laughs> that I would say. Hi, Billy Batman. <laughs> Billy Batman? <laughs> Is that another Batman? I, I've heard a lot of Batmans. My name's Billy Batman. <laughs> He's uh, from Shelbyville. <laughs> <laughs> is it like Nightwing? Oh, I'm really excited here. Um, I was trying to process the information the guy was giving me. I wasn't thinking character names. The gentleman starts walking to the bar, and as I'm looking at him, the realization of what, uh, what Barfly was telling me sinks in. Holy shit, Frank Vincent is playing drums in this band. Playing drums. He nice. He definitely sees the recognition on my face. Mr. Vincent comes up to me and asks for a vodka uh, and tonic, I think. Uh, I it's fine. Nobody cares. I get his drink using Top Shelf. I'm not stupid. Uh, he thanks me and tells me to keep an eye on his drink, get him a new one when he's low, and to not let the ice cubes melt while I'm bringing it to him. Oh, what? man. You know what? Yeah. That's just about enough of that. <laughs> Listen, you use your superpowers to keep that thing cold the whole time. Okay. The whole notion of like never let my yeah. drink get low, you fucking scumbags. Yeah. What an asshole. <laughs> R.I.P. By the way, <laughs> rest in yeah. peace for this gentleman. Well, but also, well, just in here's, general, here's to all my Billy Bands. <laughs> <laughs> Not just Frank Vincent doing no. this, but like anyone who's like, don't let it get low, don't let the ice cubes melt, mm. fucking suck it. That's the right answer because it's old Italian men always. Yes. Like every time in the service situation, an old guy, hey, come here, kid. And because they're only those are gonna be like forty bucks at the end, which is kind of nice. Yeah, but it's never worth it no never plus uh, having to hear all those racist yeah. jokes yeah there's they, also that i wonder if they got ice in hell <laughs> it's possible uh i politely laugh and tell them that i will i initially <laughs> <laughs> yeah <yep. laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> that's good hey, Vincent. uh i initially <laughs> think that this is funny believing that he was putting on the facade of one of his gangster characters that was until he stopped to talk to the guy who asked for his autograph I moved toward the end of the bar to listen in on their conversation. After a moment, the guy sitting next to the autograph seeker chimes in with, Are you going to play that old man shit all night tonight? Ooh. <laughs> Mr. Vincent replies with, Kid, if you ever say something stupid to me like that again, I'll shove you back in your mother's vagina. <laughs> Wow! Yeah. What a threat! You're gonna get unbirthed by Frank Vincent. But I, I like the idea that they wouldn't, like he wouldn't play the old shit. Like he's gonna suddenly do like spin doctors. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, now for this next one, uh, you may have heard of it. It's called uh, Little Miss. <laughs> Oh, oh, you asked for it again. Okay, uh, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Ellis, I need you to come down here. I need to put your son back up in your vagina. <laughs> 
listen, sweetheart, you lay back. It's going to be fine. <laughs> I'm I carrying have, through on a threat. It's like a turducken of some kind. <laughs> Like a, like a cannibal, like Hannibal, like if yes. Hannibal yes. had Thanksgiving, right. yes. he sure. would put a man inside his mother's vagina. Oh, right. Put the cat, them. put the cat up the guy's butt. Oh. Right, right, right. And, right, and right. then it's really coming together. Totally. Yes, yes, Will. Thank you for coming to my Thanksgiving party. <laughs> <laughs> it's me and uh, the Chesapeake Bay area's most popular serial killers. <laughs> there are a lot of us on this show. <laughs> I mean, it's like everybody. <laughs> Most people are serial killers. Uh, I-95, serial killer, serial killer, serial killer. <laughs> Your butcher, serial killer. <laughs> Your hairdresser, serial killer. And this is just my friend who's a serial killer because he eats a lot of Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs> it was then that I knew more often than not, Mr. Vincent was just playing an exaggerated version. Well... Uh, of himself in his movies. Right. Needless to say, in I, movies that he's in, he's yeah. not. His movies. It's not a Frank Vincent movie. No, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> needless to say, I did my best to not let his ice cubes melt in his drink, and Mr. Vincent's tab seemed to get lost on the on the night nights he played at our restaurant. He's a generous tipper. That's how that goes. All right. Always how that goes. Yep. Have, have you guys ever encountered a celebrity that's really only a slightly exaggerated version of themselves on screen? Hugs and kisses, Harry in Indianapolis. P.S. You guys should come to Indianapolis sometimes. It's decent. <laughs> <laughs> he put that ellipses in. Yeah. Chris Cabin did not invent that ellipses. Are you okay, Eric? Is that was I did yes, that right? Should yes, I sa- yes. should I have said ellipses? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry then. But I think uh, I would like to go to Indianapolis sometime to play sure. a show. Yeah. Why not? Also, you could drive to Chicago. We're there a lot. Uh, so yeah, celebrities that were basically themselves. Slight diversion because uh, I don't really have that story, but I did. Yeah. I was an altar boy for a long time. Uh, not for a long time. The priest years. was very much himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would clean in, in the Bronx, obviously, and there right. would be a lot of old Italian Catholic funerals. You would clean the fuck up really? in tips. Oh, right. Every Some old uncle. Uh, you, know that, that you, did a, you did a good job with it. Oh, you did a beautiful <laughs> job with the service. Let's uh, send her off okay. And I'll do, it'll always be the yep. money is here, the clasp in it. You did oh, wow. a great job for you. For you. I thought you were just taking it out of like the, the the tip that goes around the jar. <laughs> oh no, no, oh no, not the <laughs> not the little but not the collection you take. No, no, no. Little, give me a kid out. You guys did a beautiful job on that service. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a little light today. Uh, here's a bag of my mother's sauce. <laughs> <laughs> sauce. It would be it would be gravy. Gravy. By the way. Apologies. <laughs> uh, can, yeah, I don't know. Celebrities that are like themselves. Um, Edward Norton plays a lot of douchebags. He was a douchebag in person. <laughs> uh, I saw Emeril Lagasse at a hotel bar in Beverly Hills. Ooh. Yeah. And he was just sitting there like a frog struggling to breathe. Uh-huh. I couldn't believe it. Like, he was just like, oh. Just like, <laughs> like a bad day. Just like, he's, just like he is on TV. That's true. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. It looks like <laughs> a big toad. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Well, that's the problem. Emerald comes in, he wants to get a salad, and they're like, ooh, it's Emerald Lagasse. He loves spicy food. <laughs> yep. And they're like, here you go, free of charge, Emerald. Here's fucking 20 frog's legs. Yeah, totally. He's like, ah, my hemorrhoids will bleed after this. I just want that salad. And then he clasped those those frog legs and put them in my hand. <laughs> just you, kids. Frog, frog legs? Those are my brethren, kids. <laughs> right, yeah. I think he's part frog. Listen, I don't want my mom to go to hell. Here's uh, 20 bucks for you. Uh, I have to give that to the priest. <laughs> just uh, covering all my bases. Can't wait. You're part of the clergy. Can you get this to the river man at the river sticks, please? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, all right. What's the, what's the next one here? Uh, uh, we are reading. Uh, we are talking about perfect specimens. Also, I want to just really quickly. This is a Nathan Hamill original T-shirt. Wait, let me get in on your camera yep. here. Steve. Can you Hang touch on. your nipple again? You I touch, can touch it. My there, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, Nathan Hamill original. Uh, there it is. It's on Threadless. You should check it out. That there it is. Friend of the show. Great T-shirt. I look okay in it. <laughs> the shirt looks great. The shirt <laughs> looks great on you. Yes. Now no one's gonna buy it because they saw it on you. Like, <laughs> wait, are, <laughs> wait, are they are they all worn by him? <laughs> Does he wear them before they get to me? Oh no! Great. Oh now, no! Now Nathan's business is. Has been bankrupted because you touched your I nipple like on a camera. The idea that Nathan would send all of his shirts to Steve, he would put them on, and then they'd ship them out. Oh, definitely pre-worn, dude. That's it. What do you think those tags? It's like inspected by forty. Oh, right. Yeah, because they're putting them on and being like, 
it's a shirt, and then <laughs> taking it off. You got to check to make sure it's a shirt. That's right? true. It's a shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, perfect specimens. Th- speaking of. Right. Hey, guys. Uh, I was catching up on older mailbag episodes and was struck by an email. By the way, on that WHM podcast, we've got mm. the mailbags listed out now. If you want to just, that's a oh, great. Oh, the website. Oh, uh, WHMpodcast.com. It's a great way. Yeah. Everything's like sectionized. It's a beautiful website. Yeah, we finally updated it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting. It's very exciting. We're very excited. About it. I was catching up on older mailbag episodes, and I was struck by an email from a listener whose ex followed her to college. Oh, right. Who yeah. Followed her to college, waited outside for uh, 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 her classes for her, and ultimately gave her lice. I do remember <laughs> that. Uh, it brought back memories of my own experience with a suitor turned so- stalker. Uh, who, to his credit, uh, at least never gave me lice. Oh, that's good. Uh, it that's started, something. It started the first day of high school when a guy approached me after one of uh, my classes with, Hey, you Italian? Because um, I only <laughs> date inside, you know, my blood. <laughs> that man was Frank Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have the blood test kit right here. We can do all of it right here. <laughs> hey, you Italian? Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> doing a great job. Doing a great job. You Italian? Yeah, all right. That's uh, two parts oregano, <laughs> one part garlic. Yeah, you're Italian. Uh, which he had correctly deduced from hearing a teacher st- stumble through my four-syllable first name uh, <laughs> during roll call. Uh, it turned out to be he was also Italian, obviously. Uh, since we were in a small town in central Florida, it wasn't too common to run into Italians who weren't related to you. Uh, he walked me to my next class, talking about how being new in town, an Italian, and not much else. <laughs> so your mom sure <laughs> says a lot of spaghetti sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> she certainly does. So uh, you hate the Irish as much as I do. <laughs> do you Maybe bring more? meatballs to lunch as well? <laughs> I don't eat this stuff here, just meatballs. <laughs> just meatballs. Just remembering uh, how... Uh, in the wedding singer, when Adam Sandler's getting paid in meatballs for doing the piano <laughs> lessons, <laughs> uh, that's that was great. disgusting. <laughs> he walked me around. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I can't remember exactly where he'd moved from, but his accent indicated his last known address to be a Staten Island dump. Uh, <laughs> but he was actually pretty cute, uh, with a Karate Kid vibe that extended Ooh. beyond a speech pattern. All right, all right. So at first, La I Russo flirt- Latelli. Yeah. So I, at first, I flirted back enthusiastically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, even though we had one class together, it became his habit to wait outside each of my classes oh boy. to hey. walk me to my next one. Hey. Hey. Every class, uh. every day. Wow, oh. that's just like instantly your property. Yes, exactly. All right, I'm going to dial 9-1. <laughs> yeah. And then when I leave the lecture hall, <laughs> one again. Uh, it got old fast. Besides our heritage, we had nothing in common, uh, but it didn't deter him from talking nonstop. I quickly gave up on the flirting and... Uh, soon quit answering him altogether, <laughs> but it made no difference. Oh, uh, man. He'd talk out of the side of my face as I power walk through the halls with my eyes glued straight ahead for fear of an incidental eye contact. Yikes, man. Since he had caught me so early in the school year, I hadn't made enough friends yet to afford m- uh, that afforded me many opportunities to escape his constant attention, and I became terrified s- that I would never be rid of, rid of him. Oh. Uh, after uh, what seemed uh, like a million days in a row of this, one night my older sister was at the local gym uh, and while on the treadmill was interrupted by the greeting, Hey, you Tony's sister? Holy tits. This is like some fucking killer workout shit, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. just, Totally. Uh, um, this definitely happened at Rhonda's workout. <laughs> and Tony, it, Tony with an I, by the way, and that now leads me to believe the force. It's an Antoinetta situation. Yeah. That's Antoinetta. Like a re- yeah. 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 I just have to count on my fingers. But no, dude. That's a, that's there a, it is. That's a Bronx special. Uh, Steven Sadak, Italian name detective. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now everyone's got to slip him a twenty. <laughs> uh, she turned to see she turned to see her tormentor, who she never officially met, but knew uh, f- him knew of him from my stories, and had probably seen me trailing all throughout school. He started prattling on at her, which she attempted to ignore until he said, "I don't know, I don't know what your sister's problem is. You girls should be dating Italian guys, and she's got a perfect specimen right here." Oh, dude. <laughs> Was this dude's name The Situation? (laughs) (laughs) 
That guy went to jail like a couple of times, I think. Like, I think he's in jail right now, isn't he? Yeah, I think he? it's like taxes. Taxes, yeah. yeah. It's always no, taxes. No, really, I'm a perfect specimen. The doctor said I was. <laughs> <laughs> Made in a lab. <laughs> Look, I don't want to get into phrenology or nothing. <laughs> I was perfect for the experiment he was doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm the great middle of a human centipede. <laughs> I got the thickness for it. And the head of hair. The robust, garlicky center of a human centipede. Uh, human centipede. Stay tuned. Uh, oh, right. Uh, Eep. My nice. sister's version of the story ends with her guffawing in his face, but I've always wondered if there was more to it. Uh, perhaps she followed up with a stern warning to lay off or uh, maybe getting open mouth laughed at in uh, public from a pretty girl uh, from his school was enough. But whatever she did worked because he never talked to me again after that. Wow. It's been 20 years and I have never dated an Italian guy. <laughs> in fact, I took the Mrs. Siska route and partnered myself with Eric uh, with, an e- with an Eric with blonde hair yeah. a- and a surname that matches the drapes. Good lord. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Thank you for many hours, <laughs> the many hours of laughs, Tony from Vegas. Tony I, from yes, Vegas, yes. by the way. Wow, man, also, that's something. I stole an Italian girl from the perfect specimen as well. So oh, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah, my, <laughs> my wife is Italian. Well, that's the thing is they, they get. I'm pretty sure a lot of Italian women get really tired of Italian men really quickly. Yeah. Now, and you know, teach their own. I'm, I'm a bit of Italian. I know a lot of my a lot of people in my family. A lot are of people get sick of you. <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people get sick of you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's a fun uh, yeah so uh, did you guys well, ever stalk anyone? <laughs> I did not. Okay, no. that's good no. to hear. Never good stalked hear. anyone. Never and been stalked. No, no one ever wanted to stalk me. Obviously, <laughs> would well, have been soon enough, Eric. <laughs> uh, I will say though, my yeah. sister would be the person to go to bat for the family. She's like a little bit shorter than I am, which is really tiny, mm. but a terrifying, intense person. Yeah, oh, uh, wow. and. She would, like, one time there was a, a, a kerfuffle at the orthodontist with my other sister. She came home upset, and my sister called up this orthodontist office. Oh, really? And it was a fucking, a, a, to end it all. <laughs> was just like. They closed the practice after that phone call? <laughs> they, they had to. It was just like. Where do you get off? How do you treat people like this? Where were you raised? Like it is oh, sort of like wow. it's like Where that. Sh- it's like that kind of shit. Just wow. beautiful stuff. Uh, which one am I reading? A uh, sex ed with Transformers. You can do either one. All right. <clears throat> sex ed with the Transformers. Hey, WHM gang, long-time listener, first-time emailer. Been waiting to send you this little story for a while, so here goes nothing. It was the year of our Lord, 2007. Nancy Pelosi was elected the first female Speaker of the House. Steve Jobs unveiled the iPhone. The Departed was winning every award ever made. But most importantly, Michael Bay's Transformers was released. Being much younger at the time than I am now, that's what happens when 12 years <laughs> goes by, <laughs> I was uh, sufficiently... Years are passing. <laughs> I was sufficiently uninformed in all areas of critical analysis of movies, but I loved me some Transformers. Mm. I didn't get to see it in theaters. I guess you didn't love them that much. (laughs) Uh, But eventually it started showing regularly on cable, and it became a staple of my household that I would watch whenever it was playing. My God! That's a lot of Transformers. That's a lot. That's a lot of Transformers. Sam Witwicky, you should have seen me in the theater! (laughs) Sam Witwicky, you consider yourself such a fan of my people. My people. <laughs> oh, the Transformer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, are you a Transformer? <laughs> <laughs> you should be dating other Transformers. <laughs> you have the perfect specimen right here. <laughs> hey, does your trunk turn into a butt? <laughs> Definitely does. Got junk in it. Uh, uh, why are you saying that from my four syllable first name? <laughs> Optimus. <laughs> Optimus Amante. <laughs> They chopped it off at Ellis Island. <laughs> Sam Witwicky. <laughs> Ellis Island was a real chop shop. <laughs> oh, shit. Yes, it they was also <laughs> converted my exhaust port. Someone <laughs> stole my bumper. It was <laughs> primo, but they turned it into prime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Italian Transformers. That's <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> Uh, oh, you should see. You should have my mother's motor oil. <laughs> my mother's motor oil is better than the motor oh, oil you can I'm get. Picturing like a like a little Ferrari <laughs> with a babushka on. 
pardon me. I've been away from the home too long. I meant gravy. My <laughs> mother's gravy. Ma, ma, I'm not hungry. Ma, I'm not. Put it back. <laughs> I do not need an oil tick. Mother, mother, no, no, ma, ma. Unleaded gravy. <laughs> you know what, ma? It is fine that they have their own parade. <laughs> we don't have to have anything to do with it. Oh. Here's my great-grandmother, a bicycle that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, she was in the bicycle thieves. <laughs> Uh, all right. At some point, I came across the movie on DVD, decided I needed it, and came to own it uh, so I could watch it even more than I already was. My God. One night, I was watching the movie with my mother, uh, who had never seen it before. I'm sure that was a magical night for her. <laughs> There's a particular scene where Shia LaBeouf's character's, uh, character is frantically searching around his room. His parents burst into the room to find an uncomfortably sweaty Shia. To this, the mother character asks... What are you doing? Were you masturbating? Uh. Da, da, da. <laughs> uh, the scene was either not in the TV version or the scene was edited, and having not remembered it, I laughed, then looked over at my horrified, very Christian mother and asked, What's masturbating? Oh, come on, kid. <laughs> oh, just oh, let it go. Eve, Figure yeah. it out look, later. Look it up later. We had exactly. the internet in 2007. Go to school. Go to school. Be like, yo. Uh, uh, <laughs> go to school to masturbate. <laughs> no, to find out what it is. Uh, <laughs> it's eating really fast. Good night. <laughs> uh, it's when you don't pray enough. <laughs> uh, to this, my mother promptly replied, go ask your father. Classic parenting move. Oh, uh, no, I have to go to church now and go to confession. <laughs> I have to 20 r Hail Marys. I can never fit inside the confessional garage. <laughs> Meet my cousin, Bumblebino. Bumblebino. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Pope's a Transformer, too. Uh, it could be. Oh, that's the Pope true. Mobile. The po oh, 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 shit. Oh. <laughs> Dude, if the Pope just turned into his own car. <laughs> just drove away. Uh, 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 when I, uh, which I did, and I proceeded to sit and received a long, lengthy, detailed sexual education I had neither asked oh, for Jesus. nor was ready for. Holy oh, shit. I want to know if there were props. <laughs> uh, any stories about uncomfortable conversations brought about by movies? Love the show. Thanks for all the laughs. And keep up the good work. P.S. I was going to call this letter, Michael Bay taught me about masturbation, but I wasn't ready for that defamation lawsuit, Quinn. A lot of people learned to masturbate from Michael Bay. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had that video. <laughs> <laughs> what video? <laughs> How it's a to. fake video. An instructional video? Yeah. Oh, that's the, great. The Jack, film Jack, Bad Boys. Jack, Jack, Jack. <laughs> uh, yeah, not for me, because I never watched anything yeah. with my parents. I never asked my parents anything like that. I all... You figured it all out on my own with the help of the internet. I remember my dad. We were watching The Prince of Tides of all things. <laughs> what and the fuck? Yeah, it was just <laughs> my parents were divorced. Sunday night, whatever was on HBO, we're watching at my dad's house. And it was uh -huh. Prince of Tides. And there's a scene where I think uh, Nick Nolte's crooked mother <laughs> goes up to him and his sister and uh, uh, various. I think it's just the two of them. Maybe there's three. Yeah. And she each on her deathbed says, "You were my favorite." This, that, and the other thing. To which my dad had to stop the movie and be like, I just want you guys to know. I don't have any favorites. And I'm like, yeah, I hope not. <laughs> I don't know. Like, there's not some fucking Prince of Tides over here, dude. Like, it's fine. Yeah, know. you're watching the Prince of Tides with us. Clearly, none of us are your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I had one of these. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Now, uh, keep in mind when this story happened, I had I was fully aware of what masturbation was and what happened. Sure. In the whole you scenario. Did. You were uh -huh. practicing at that point? I'm not sure about that. Okay. Uh, it was but you around. knew like before, during, yeah. and yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. This was okay. like, I was like 11, 12-ish. Mm. So I'm in the car with my dad and my two best friends at the time. Do, 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 um, do, 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 do. Sorry. And who starts masturbating? <laughs> uh, I did. No. Um, Real palm pilot. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Taxi driver. <laughs> um, they're in the back. My best friends are in the back seat. Sure. And oh, okay. one of them makes a joke, like, oh, what were you jagging on? Or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. Classic, and then classic comment, by the way. My dad, having the world's worst sense of humor, <laughs> just turns and says, you know what that is, right? Oh, man. And he's like, you play with your penis and stuff comes out. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? 
Remember to hit the like button below on this YouTube video. <laughs> what happened then? Hey, uh, you know they, what that is, right? That <laughs> stuff comes out. They were wordless in the back. Of course, pink with laughter, like <laughs> barely hold. Like I, they clearly were trying to roar, but like they, had, their throats hurt because they were laughing so oh hard. Oh my god! And I am just shrinking in the seat, <laughs> holding myself. It, it was horrid, horrid experience. Well, I can't top that. You just set a piano on fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, no. I mean, I didn't really have anything. My parents didn't believe in masturbation. The, well. <laughs> <laughs> the rating systems and stuff. So oh, we watch sure. whatever you wanted, and my parents would frequently watch movies with us that were very much not suitable for children. But there was never like a, you never asked, yes. and they never told. No, exactly. nope. it was just like understood. Mm-hmm. Yep, you'll go to your room later, and you'll fucking stuff will come out. Uh-huh. <laughs> I totally agree. That's always the move. It was the deal. My family too. Like we'd watch like PG thirteen R's as they came, not like. Not cruising specifically. Yeah, the, so the it's Al Pacino on cruising. Yeah. No, but like you know, <laughs> there would be sex stuff or whatever. And I, I was just like, okay, I just I'm not going to talk about that. We're all Catholic. We're all living in shame anyway. So. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Do we have one Last more? One. one more email Last here. One. That's you, Eric. Wanted. Wanted in theaters. Hi, WHM guys. In my 20s, I picked up a share, uh, my share of bad movie-going experiences, so when you guys did an episode on Wanted, I felt like it was worth mentioning that I not only saw it in the theaters, but it was the worst theater-going experience I ever had. Wow. One day after work, I went to the AMC 34th Street, uh, for, Street 14. This uh, 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 uh. <laughs> That's one of the worst theaters Correct. in New York the City. Worst. It's terrible. Can I say really quickly, I was there recently for a Warner Brothers trade screening of the fucking horrendously bad Blinded by the Light. And I had to sit there, watch this awful movie in where, to, to tell you everything that this movie is, because you shouldn't see it, mm. uh, two Pakistani kids defeat a bunch of English skinhead racists uh, in a mall food court by singing Bruce Springsteen at them. Yep. Sure. That's that movie. <laughs> I had to watch that entire movie in the middle of fucking July when the air conditioning was broken. Ooh. Dude, the only thing oh. worse than watching a bad movie in a the theater is watching it when you're fucking sweating your sack so off. So they stole the ending of Green Room then. <laughs> <laughs> I will say all of 34th Street west of all 34th Street in general, just steer clear of. It's awful. It yeah. smells terrible. It's it is. Awful. Only go there if you have to go see something at the Garden. Yeah. Otherwise, get the hell out and of there. And like any, like 8th Avenue, that whole area, like going up to Times Square, nope. to Ugh. Penn Station, you, you just want to kill yourself. Death. I saw Alita Battle Angel there, and good movie, bad theater. I recently went to the MC Empire in Times Square. Yeah. Awful, too. Awful. It's, yeah. they're, 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 it's really gone downhill. I can't believe it. Like, it used to be kind of on par with the Regal across the street. Yeah. Yeah, but now it's just like it's way worse. If you're at the 34th Street, just go down to the Union Square, that Regal there. That's like That's similar fine. experience. Yeah. It's not great. No. I'm not saying it's great. So if you're at 34th Street, just go, go down. down 20 blocks and then east a bunch is <laughs> yeah, the solution. It's not that bad. Why don't you just go down Eighth Avenue to the Sinopolis? You're right yeah, there. Yeah, the Sinopolis is actually 23rd a re- Street. Great, beautiful theater. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway. Movie theater recommendations. Yeah, if you ever go to New York City, That's remember, true. That's remember true. this episode. I arrived 15 minutes early, and being someone who was too poor to afford any uh, other hobby aside from wasting his entire day watching films, I had nothing better to do, so just chose the best possible seat I could find and waited out. As the theater filled up, I ended up noticing there was a decent crowd. Soon enough, a lady came up to me and politely asked if I could move a seat so she and her boyfriend could get a spot. I obliged, ready to move. Until I noticed on the other side of me was a man holding a large par- uh, parcel of stuff. Ju- was this the stuff that came out? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Just took the seat and was ready to nudge myself into. In that moment, I froze. I realized what happened, and my mind, too polite to uh, say anything, was left reaching for a response. Uh, 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 you, you don't fucking move. Yeah. You got there so fucking early, you have the right to that goddamn seat. Yeah. Wait, so what is happening here? It sounds like someone's like grabbing the seat he was supposed to move into. Exactly. At the same time. Yeah, oh, okay. it's all kind of like uh, I'm sitting here. This is this is probably a twofer. Like, oh, could you move down one so that we can sit together? And then, as that happens, some big old fucker puts a parcel on the thing. This exact thing happened to me one time. Okay, yeah, that's why I don't get up. Yep, I didn't. I sat. 
I stayed. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's my stood your ground. Room. Fuck you. There's a fat guy there now. <laughs> <laughs> when I finally uh, gathered words, I uh, explained to the waiting lady what had happened. Her attitude quickly went from polite to annoyed as I was sandwiched between a lady whose demeanor told me that she was she usually got what she wanted, and another guy who was was as lost as I was in this scenario since as soon as he realized what happened, he uh, did not seem to understand her or my pleading if he could move. I again tried to explain to her that, you know what, fuck explaining yourself Yeah, to dude, sorry, that's it. Yep, just sit there. Movie's about to start. Yep. I got Previews. <laughs> was it a, a sold-out theater for Wanted? Was there no other <laughs> seats? I tried to, apparently, which is fucking nuts. They said it was a decent crowd. Insane. So I tried to explain to her that there was no room unless someone uh, moves, and she quickly replied, yes, someone. Ugh. As though hinting that I needed to get out of her perfect spot so they could both enjoy the film. God, fuck you. Show up early, dude. Yep. Yeah, exactly. As, as I continued to... Gotta ev- say, Eric, this wouldn't happen with assigned seats, just an <laughs> FYI. Well, also, assigned seats happen when good men do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Assi- I mean, for a big opening thing, I guess yes. assi- assigned seats do have their place. Sure. Okay. But, but I agree with your statement that if it's 1 p.m. on a Tuesday, yeah. you know. But the problem is sometimes, like, when I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it was, like, 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. But it was a big movie, and it was packed. Yeah. So yeah. not always does that work. Well, I, I tend to be a person who's, like, I, I might have, like, some OCD because I'm, like, the movie, the movie's going to start. i got to get to the theater oh. so <laughs> super fucking early. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I'm, so, I'm, there, I'm there 45 minutes early no matter what. Oh, so yeah. I want a medal, like, pinned <laughs> to my chest for doing that. And, I, I, you know, I should get the best seats because I got there early. I mean, yeah, show up on time, first of all. <laughs> Reserve seats thing. or no. I'm sorry. Assigned seating has given way to a level of madness I've not seen before. <laughs> I saw Godzilla, like, the fucking fifth weekend of that movie. 25 minutes in, some guy comes on with the flashlight on his phone trying to find his assigned uh, seat oh, in an empty theater. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. That's a bit much. I mean, they have. <laughs> I just want I just want the option. Yep. I just want. Tell me which theaters don't have assigned seating. And yeah. I'll go there and you go to. Uh, right. Well, you know, you when you're buying your, it. You're buying it on like Fandango or whatever. You're either clicking your seat or you're not. Oh, dude, I'm just showing up. Oh, you're just showing. This is but the then th- they do the f- they do the click thing. Wait, yeah. you're just buying your ticket in the theater lobby? Yeah. What is this? 1998? <laughs> what the fuck is the matter with you? They're not sold out. They're never sold do out. Do you have to like walk in through saloon doors as it's the <laughs> Wild West? Because <laughs> this is yeah. some crazy shit right here. I think app, they present- app, 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 <laughs> app, app. And then you get the fucking like, <laughs> here's the seating chart because we're going to a concert now. <laughs> and then it's just like, okay, all right. Oh, fuck. I didn't realize that the purple thing was the screen. So now I'm fucked. Oh, uh, well, I see. There's yeah. so many scenarios where this, it could all go awry. You should probably just take your time and figure it I out. I should probably <laughs> just never leave the house. Uh, (laughs) as i continued reaching for some kind of solution a kind woman in the back interrupted to say that there was space in the back i just love now people are interjecting like could you stop (laughs) the seat crisis was averted i began seat crisis (laughs) seats taken (laughs) seats taken you can sit here if you want to but i don't want to i want to sit here and then I was in a seat crisis again. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I realize that if I gave up that cherished spot, I would uh, have averted all things to come. To thi- uh, I think it was about uh, around the point where we're introduced to the League of Assassins or maybe after the protagonist quit, but, after I, uh, but I started hearing these long snorts between the actions. I turned and realized it was the man who sat next to me that had fallen asleep. Oh. So he, it's not snores, it's snorts. The yeah. guy's sleep snorting? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a snort. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. That's yeah, what nah, sleep happens. Let you know. Just let you know. I had encountered uh, homeless folk who sometimes hang out in the theater before, but I've never expected one to take a nap in the middle. Well, I don't know if this guy's homeless. Yeah, he's just taking a nap. You weren't there. Well, he he was. was. expensive. <laughs> The middle row during an action movie, so uh, it took me some time to realize why he was carrying a large bundle into his seat. Despite this, I continued to watch uh, the film under vague whiffs of his breath that came with each passing snore, and it <laughs> that that tinted everything 
I watched, I guess tainted yeah. everything I watched uh, with the distinct smell of pickles. Well, I mean, this is this is wanted. Th- th- this, is this is just get, get leave. Yeah. <laughs> Either just go to that fucking seat that that yeah. lady told you about or get the fuck out of there because it's wanted and who cares? Exactly. Fucking smelling pickles for two hours. <laughs> that now whole, it's your own fault. That whole area smells like farts anyway. It's yeah. just awful. It's an awful theater in an awful part of town. You're watching an awful movie next to an awful person. <laughs> Sometime later, I think that around the time the father-son fight happens, he began to wake up and pay attention to the movie, saving me from enjoying the film in pickle vision. <laughs> I, I embraced the film, but then this loud grating noise kept stabbing my ears. Every scene of the film was... Na- this is just the movie. It's just terrible. Yeah, yeah it's not good. Be- previous episode, by the way. Being treated with commentary from one of the viewers from behind me, laden with yeah and kick his ass. Oh, man. And Jesus. other expletives that felt like the laziest impersonation of a Call of Duty gamer in the 2000s made real. Well, then it would have needed to come with a bunch of racial slurs thrown in, too, if you're online <laughs> yeah, gaming. Yeah, that's also true. <laughs> while, while this is nothing new to anyone, uh, uh, what made it especially painful was that, was that the voice was scraping into puberty and had a range that reminded me of Steven's nerd impression oh. if he did it while rubbing balloons with his hands. Yeah, impression. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm not going to do it. <laughs> How about that? Steve just has good recall. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I had lost any and, and all immersion in the film. <laughs> that wasn't going to happen yeah, anyway, buddy. On. The world of the movie. I saw this in the theaters at the Kaufman Astoria Theater, and I was I could never get into the movie just because it was terrible. Yes. So. I saw it at the Village East, and I fell asleep. Oh, shit. Yep. Did you bring your parcel with you? <laughs> <laughs> Brought my pickle breath, dude. <laughs> Uh, so mindless action film that had become an endurance test to see if I could make it to the end of the film without running from the chalkboard scraping narration of a young edge lord in training sitting behind me to this day I've ne- I have uh, never encountered a movie experience as bad as this and uh, and has if anything made me want to see more indie films and attempt to avoid crowds I saw that day I will say you say that but you go oh. to some of these indie f- movie theaters you go to some of these Retrospectives, yeah. you get the old, oh, oh, yeah. nasty, oh. pickle breath New York people oh. with the newspapers, the yeah. sandwiches from home. Dude, I, I saw uh, 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 The Farewell, and I was like, oh, man, a beautiful, at the Sinopoly, actually. Uh-huh. And we saw it at like 3 p.m. on a Sunday. Forget about yeah, it. No, you can't Night go to the of movies. the Living Dead in that <laughs> fucking theater. You can't go to the movies on a Sunday afternoon like that, man. You yeah. just can't do it. So you gotta, no, you just have to time things. You, you see the big, popular Hollywood movie, Tuesday, 11 a.m. Yeah. Just call, call out of work. <laughs> and then you see the indie movie at yeah. like 10 p.m. on a Saturday. That's right, the right, movie. Right. And everybody goes to bed. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> Thank you for uh, keeping uh, my fiance and I laughing. I'll look forward to your future shows. If you ever do a live show in Vermont, I would be happy to catch you guys. And hopefully, I won't have to move my seat for a cranky lady or a guy with pickle breath or puberty. Best Don. Well, Don, you can avoid that by buying VIP tickets <laughs> at select <laughs> We Hate Movie shows. Now touring the West Coast, but I would like to go. We to do Vermont. not. We do not allow VIP tickets in Vermont. <laughs> I've changed everything. It's not fair that certain people get to meet the artist and other people can't meet the artist. You got to wait around, pay extra money to meet a fat person with a fucking T-shirt on, assigned seating. No, general admission for all. <laughs> general admission for all. All he's going to do is spit water on you anyways. <laughs> right in your hard working face. VIP <laughs> tickets are ready. <laughs> uh, well, I guess that's going to do it. I mean, do you guys have any stories about bad movie theater audiences? I mean, we have, but we've, we've told them a hundred times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing, no, nothing new. Yeah, I mean, that, as Chris Rock says in that one special, you go have some new shit happen to you. So we <laughs> we got to go out to the movies, have yeah, a bad sure. experience, and then come back and, and tell everybody about it. That's I think, right. I think is the move. We want, actually, for next month, sure. all your spooky stories. Yes. Oh, it's going to yeah. be October. That's right. Spooky stories for the spooktacular. Ghost stories, fake ghosts, bad costumes, the whole bit. Bad costumes, the stuff that comes uh, out when you do the. Yeah. <laughs> also, if you're shitting yourself, that does well for us. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, we get a couple of those. It's been a while. Yeah, we could do a sweeps episode of the mailbag. <laughs> All shit stories. But that is the WHM mailbag for the month of September. 
Again, get those emails in, those weird, spooky stories. We all hate movies at gmail.com. Until next time, I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Chris Cabin. Eric Siska. Take it easy. (laughs) 